Welcome to DUT. 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 Sigusegele, we've got you. 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 Together achieving greatness. 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 Welcome to the Durban University of Technology's first ever virtual institution-wide integrated first-year student orientation. The orientation program is part of the six... Sigusege, we've got you. We've got you. Holistic Student Support Initiatives, a collaborative effort of many departments within the DUT ecosystem aimed at holistically enhancing your campus life experience and creating an enabling living and learning environment for students to pursue their academic and co-curricular activities. DUT is itself a developing university. Our strength is enhanced by its diversity of cultures and traditions among its staff and students and different cultures of the different universities that were combined to form DUT. DUT, an institution with a proud and rich heritage of academic, entrepreneurship and leadership excellence. DUT offers a broad spectrum of accredited academic qualifications clustered in the six faculties which are Health Sciences, Management Sciences, Accounting and Informatics, Applied Sciences, Engineering and Built Environment, Arts and Design. Before we start, let's take a short lift to our beautiful campuses. DUT is geographically divided into seven campuses in the Durban and Midland centres, namely Steve Biko Campus. All courses with the Faculties of Engineering and Built Environment and the Faculty of Applied Sciences are based on this campus. And many other departments within the student services sector, inclusive of financial aid. Student Counseling and Health, Student Governance and Development, HIV and AIDS, Isolempilo Clinic, Academic Support Offices such as the Alan Pittenderg Library, Centre for Excellence in Learning and Teaching and the Writing Centre. Written Campus has the Chiropractic, Housing the Faculties of Health Sciences and the Faculty of Accounting and Informatics, Ritten Campus has the Chiropractic, Homeopathic and Somatology Clinics. The hotel school is also based on this campus. ML Sultan Campus. Courses within the Faculty of Management Sciences are in this campus. Other offices such as the Entrepreneurial Desk and Center, BM Patel Library and the e-learning and multimedia offices of CELT. City Campus, the home for the artistic and creative minds, the Faculty of Arts and Design is based on this campus. Brickfield Campus, students doing fashion, graphic design and other courses within the Faculty of Arts and Design are on this campus.
The Midland Center is geographically located at the Peter Marisberg region with two campuses, namely Indumiso Campus and Riverside Campus. Indumiso Campus, located in the heart of Imbani Township. The campus has three academic departments, Civil Engineering, Nursing Science and School of Education and all the academic support and student services departments such as Students Housing and Res Life, Midlands Entrepreneurship Centre and Student Desk. Centre for Excellence in Learning and Teaching, CELT. Clinic, Library and Sport Administration to name a few. The Riverside campus is located at Scottsville. There are eight academic departments at this campus, namely Applied Management Sciences, Public Relations and Communication Management, Business Administration, Human Resource Management, Public Management, Ecotourism and Accounting and Informatics, Cost and Management Accounting, Financial Accounting and Business Information System. For supporting service departments at Riverside Campus, we have Finance Department, Financial Aid, Administration, Students' Library, Clinic, Students' Counseling, Student Governance, and SRC Office. We have an array of support departments, services, and staff members who are well-trained and equipped to support you throughout your academic journey, ranging from the Library, Financial Aid, Admissions, Student Housing and Residence Life, Center for Excellence in Learning and Teaching, Student Governance, Student Counseling, Entrepreneurship Desk, and Health, and many more. DUT, together achieving greatness. Day one, Vice Chancellor's Welcome Address and Parents Day. Students, parents, guidance, and our stakeholders. Again, welcome to our first ever virtual institution-wide integrated first year student orientation. In ensuring adherence to the COVID-19 regulations, we have since opted to meet in this fashion. Worry not, all the orientation sessions will be recorded and made available to all students post the orientation. I hope you will enjoy the next four days as we take you through all the array of services that we have in our great institution. Without further ado, allow me to introduce our first speaker, the Dean of Students, Dr. Nkonwane. Let me take this opportunity to welcome you all to this, our 2021 segment of our annual orientation for first year students. You will all agree with me that this is no ordinary day on the calendar of this great university. But a day that marks the beginning of a journey for our first year students. And this is a journey called the Student Life Cycles which starts at orientation and concludes on graduation day. It is my fervent belief that as we begin with this session, our first year students will be exposed to a broad range of support programs 
that the university offers. Among others, the holistic student supports, known as Sikusekele, we got you. As well as psychosocial supports by our student house, student <coughs> counseling and health, including academic support by our Center for Excellence in Learning and Teaching, CALT. As we welcome you to this session, a number of departments will also outline various support services that they offer to our students. And I must hasten to say that you have made the best decisions for your lives by choosing DUT to pursue your careers within our six faculties. May I therefore take this opportunity to wish you well as you embark on this exciting journey. Not only exciting, but may also be punctuated with potholes here and there. And that is where our support services will come in to get you out of those academic portals. Unlike in high school, we normally do not have assemblies regularly. This is but your first assembly and later during the year, you will also have an, an opportunity to attend the State of the University Address, which will be delivered by our Vice Chancellor and Principal, Professor Tambun Tembu. But the goal remains, the next big assembly will be your graduation day in three to four years time. May you have a rewarding Stay at the Thank you. Day one, Vice Chancellor's Welcome Address and Parents' Day. Our next speaker is the Deputy President of the Student Representative Council, famously known as SRC. Mr. Silindogushe Nzalela. Greetings to you all DOT students, distinguished guests, and the management of the university. My name is Silindogushe Nzalela, the SRC Deputy President. It is both an honor and privilege to stand before you today and welcome you on this important day. The start of a new academic calendar. DOT prides itself in excellence, integrity, and professionalism. We as a student representative council of DOT, we would we'll like to welcome you. Let us start our new year with hopes, dreams, no matter how limited you might be. We are all here because we deserve and through our hard work that were affected by the issue of COVID-19. It is a defining global health crisis in our lifetime, but you manage to make it through. This is big transition. The first year brings in new experience and new ways of learning. There are structures that have been put in place to support you, and the SRC is one of those structures. We appeal to you all to use this opportunity optimally uh, that is best afforded to you. We believe that you should not lose the momentum and carry it out through the university line. You carry a special responsibility to succeed. As the SRC, we would like to support you and welcome to a DOT and wish you all the best and good luck. Thank you. Day one, Vice Chancellor's Welcome Address and Parents' Day. Allow me to introduce the Vice Chancellor and Principal, Professor Tandwam Tembo, Umvelase. Under his leadership, 
DUT is at the top 500 in the world university rankings. Number 10 in the research and citations and number 5 in the South African university rankings. Sing my top 5. Our vice chancellor is very passionate about entrepreneurship and leadership. As a first year student, you will be granted opportunities to grow beyond just your traditional career path, but you'll be stewards of change, critical and innovative thinkers, and adaptive graduates. Good day to you all. On behalf of council, management, staff, students, and our alumni, my first task today is to congratulate you on passing your grade 12. You passed it well enough to be admitted to the programs you had applied for at DUT. Given the challenges you had to grapple with in your metric year as a result of the outbreak of COVID-19 across the world, you are surely made of sterner stuff. You are highly determined, focused, and goal-oriented, to say the least. We're very proud of you. Congratulations. Welcome to university. Welcome not just to a university, but a university of technology. Welcome to DUT, one of the top five universities in South Africa. Being at university ushers in a critical stage in your personal, intellectual, academic, and professional development. You will certainly experience significant and life-changing events and developments that will change your life for good. All these will be of great benefit to your personal good and the public good too. In the next few days and few weeks, you'll begin to realize that unlike in high school where there is heavy dependence on teachers, university requires a great measure of initiative, of independence in the work you do. You've been admitted to and will enroll in a program that at the end of it, you should be the master of the knowledge and high level intellectual and professional skills that that program is about. It's really about you. It's not about your lecturer nor your professor, but you. DUT seeks to produce creative, innovative, and adaptive graduates whose contributions to the broader society, once they exit our university, will be impactful. Part of the preparatory work your lecturers and professors will take you through includes independent thinking and critical analysis. As a university student, you cannot just say or do as others say or do. You don't just shout old and hackneyed slogans and chants without a critical analysis thereof. Facts and evidence, values and principles, reason and logic, dialogue and debate are the hallmarks of university education. If you have come here for something else, perhaps a piece of meaningless and fake paper, please don't waste your money. This place is not for you. Embrace this exciting journey to freedom of mind, thought, and behavior. You will surely be provided with all the arsenal to traverse and navigate it. Tread carefully. Its terrain is rugged with no one to level it plain and cut it straight for you to stroll through. It has hills and valleys, cliffs and plains, twists and turns. There are many pirates along the way, drugs, demagogues, and all, that might lead you astray. South Africa is experiencing many repulsive social and economic problems. In our communities, we see people driving around in expensive cars, dressed in designer labels, living in posh houses, and generally being ostentatious about their riches, especially when those riches are ill-gotten. There may not even be facts and evidence, values and principles, reason and logic to justify those riches. Knowing that some of those flaunters of ill-gotten riches hardly went to school, let alone university, you may begin to doubt 
the foundational value and import of university education. But it's the engineers universities produce that design and make those fancy and expensive cars. Sadly, the measure of success has been torpedoed to ownership of material things and not the intellect, high-level skills and innovations that produce those things in the first place. I guess in some unfortunate way, COVID-19 is showing us how important science, innovation, and technology are as the world rummages for a cure or a vaccine. I cannot guarantee that university education, and in particular a DUT qualification, will make you successful one day. What we guarantee, though, is knowledge and high-level skills. What we guarantee is a culture of reason and logic, facts and evidence, dialogue and debate to advance humanity, to advance your family and yourself in ways that are embedded in strong values and principles. What we guarantee is that the award of a certificate, a diploma or a degree at the end of your program will be as potent as you would have made it to be as you traveled this journey. It's about you your mind, your thoughts, your behavior, and what you represent, and not just what you present out there in the world. If you cheated through that journey, that award will be meaningless and worthless. No wonder you might find yourself unemployable, even though you have that certificate. Through you, your thoughts, your speech, your behavior, and what you represent, Potential employers will either discover the emptiness and fakeness of your award or its resourcefulness and authenticity. So remain steadfast, truthful, and principled so that the award will widen your horizons, open up new vistas, and demonstrate your resourcefulness and authenticity. Success will indeed be guaranteed. You are setting off on your university journey at a time the world and South Africa in particular is moving from one crisis to another. The future of this world and this country is not ours as older people, but it's yours, our youth. It requires new and fresh ideas and innovations from you, not old and hackneyed slogans and chants. Such will not come out of thin air, but from your mastery of independent thinking and critical analysis, from your own knowledge and high-level skills, and from your creativity and innovations. Apportioning blame to history does not change history and usher in a bright future. Apportioning blame to bad choices your parents made in their youth does not correct those bad choices and give you the right choices for your future. Apportioning blame to your social environment and the quality of your school schooling do not change these and brighten your future. What will brighten your future are ideas, creativity, and innovations focused unstintingly on building that future right now in the present. I said earlier on that being at university ushers in a critical stage in your personal, intellectual, academic, and professional development. Most of what I said earlier suggests the high premium we place on intellectual, academic, and professional excellence and success. While all of these aspects of excellence and success are important, personal and social development are equally important. At the end of your journey, we wish to see you having developed holistically and become a well-rounded human being. DUT has a range of personal and social development programs and projects in which students may participate. Join these programs, meet new people, and learn from them. So many of our students' social innovation and development initiatives that help to build communities around us win national competitions. Be part of that success. Be part of the impact we make to our broader society. As I end my welcome remarks, please pay attention to your thoughts and behavior. 
they prejudge either failure or success in this educational journey and what comes after it in the broader society. They are small and big things too. We do every day. They end up defining who we are as individuals and as a people. They give us identity. They build our brand, personal and or institutional. In what you do every day, if what you do every day is not helping you to achieve your dreams of excellence and success, introduce those tiny incremental changes and stick with them. Dedicate yourself to constant change. Be unshakable as you pursue your dreams. Be consistent. You'll be surprised at the remarkable results you'll achieve once you take charge of your own thoughts and behavior in lecture halls, in your residence, in your home, and in all spaces internal and external to the university. Dare to educate yourself, dare to live, dare to be exemplary, dare to succeed. And once again, welcome to DUT. Day 1. Vice Chancellor's Welcome Address and Parents' Day. Our next speaker is the Deputy Vice Chancellor Teaching and Learning, Umama Professor Nogtula Sibia Usotobe. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for choosing DUT to pursue your university education. I want to say you have made the right choice that you will not regret. Universities are critical custodians of knowledge and traditions through continuous academic engagement. The higher education experience nurtures and enables the development of students as creative, critical thinkers, problem solvers, active and responsible citizens equipped for lifelong learning. It kindles curiosity and creativity and support personal development through familiarity with the scientific method and the traditions of human knowledge. Through higher education, students attain high level skills and expertise, including entrepreneurial skills for their professional development, which is one of the objectives of the university strategy. Students are able to apply knowledge in a reflective manner and critically produce new knowledge. Ladies and gentlemen, universities exist because of you. Teaching and learning at DOT is student-centered. It is a collegial and collaborative process that involves the entire university community, as well as external partners. Teaching is a core business of the university. We endeavor to provide a context for learning through the integration of different missions and we actively promote lifelong learning. It is so unfortunate that we open the university in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic that continues to disrupt our lives, including the academic activities. Safety of staff and students is our priority at DOT. To ensure that we maintain academic excellence at DOT, we will continue to offer blended teaching and learning through multimodal learning systems. Blended learning integrates face-to-face -face and online teaching and learning. At DOT, we provide the right kind of resources and the right kind of people to drive the educational technology initiatives. We are aware that there is certainly anxiety about the interaction between these technological developments that replace face-to-face -face classroom interaction. Technology brings more opportunities as well as challenges to teaching and learning. At DOT, we have planned series of workshops on the use of various platforms of online technologies. We will provide the necessary systems of support, such as access to the internet, in the form of data, taking into consideration the network connectivity in the student's residential area. However, access to both laptops and data is a challenge for many students. 
there is currently work being done at a national level to get students access to both laptops and data, which is a challenge for many. The Department of Higher Education and Training is also engaging with different companies to get students access to South African hosted websites, including all educational sites, for as long as they are unable to attend campus. I want to end my speech by quoting a very famous and influential grandson of Africa who has changed the world with his education. This is none other than Barack Hussein Obama, the past president of the United States of America. He said when he spoke to some students at a New York school he visited, I quote, at the end of the day, we can have the most dedicated teachers, the most supportive parents, and the best schools in the world. And none of it will matter unless all of you fulfill your responsibilities, unless you show up for classes, pay attention to your lecturers, and put in the hard work it takes to succeed. I close quote. And that's what I want to focus on today the responsibility each of you has for your education. I want you to start with the responsibility you have to yourself. I hope your time at DUT changes your life. It may get difficult at times, but keep going. It will be well worth it in the end. Good luck with your studies and have fun. I thank you. Day 1. Vice Chancellor's Welcome Address and Parent Day. Next on our program, we have Mrs. Tembaletu Fisela from Legal Affairs. Um, my name is Tembaletu Fisela from the Department of Legal and Governance. We are reporting to the, to the Office of uh, DVC Peoples and Operation. Our office deals with, uh, amongst other things, deals with student disciplinaries. Firstly, I want to say congratulations to all of you for passing your metric. And thank you for choosing DUT as the preferred university of, te of technology, achieving greatness together. OK, firstly, let me say this. With each and, each, with each and every institution, there are certain rules okay, that needs to be followed. Also with DUT, it's the very same thing. We have a general handbook, which is available in our website. Please take time and read the general handbook. That's what I would personally call it our Bible. OK. In law, we have what we call um, ignorance of the law is not an excuse. Therefore, you cannot turn around and say, um, I did not know. I did not know about that rule. It was never put into my um, attention. It is your own responsibility as a student to take time and read our rules. Section 36 of the Higher Education Act and DUT Code of Conduct gives powers to the appointment of independent tribunal to hear AMA student disciplinaries. The, dis the Student Disciplinary Code aims at one, upholding the name and the reputation of the university. Two, maintaining order, discipline, safety, and security of the university. Thirdly, ensuring integrity of the academic progress of the university. The fourthly, ensuring quality of the assessment progress at the university. Let's look at the procedure of what will happen if a certain incident was to happen and it needs to be uh, referred to a disciplinary hearing. An incident will happen, then you the, the issue has to be re reported to protection services. The protection services then will conduct an investigation. With that investigation, they'll give a report to legal services. From that report, then, a precautionary suspension might be issued to a student. 
which subsequently may result into a suspension. That means the student may be suspended until the finalization of a disciplinary hearing. But please note that this depends on what circumstances um, surround that particular incident. When it's come to the tribunal, this independent tribunal that I mentioned earlier on, there are certain different levels of it. We have the first, the second, and the third. With the first level tribunal, the first level tribunal deals with the academic heads of department, the issues that can be dealt with within the department itself. Secondly, there is this other one, the, the residential um, disciplinary tribunal, where minor issues that occurred within the, um, the residences, then they have their own um, independent um, committee that deals with those issues. Then we have the second level tribunal. With the second level tribunal, we have the academic, and then we have the, the behavioral. The behavioral is the one that is being dealt with by the legal services. It's the manner in which you conduct yourself within the university. And then when it comes to the academic, we're looking at the coping and plagiarism. Okay. Then the third level, which is the highest one, is called the appeals tribunal, which gets to be appointed by the vice chancellor. That's the last level whereby all the matters get to be had within the university. Okay. These tribunals, there is a composition, a composition of it. We have the, the presiding officer, we have the assessor, we have the HOD from the, from the department the student is registered in. And then we have the prosecutor, which is normally myself when it's a behavioral, and then it's Mr. Roy Wright when it's an academic, and then, we, then the student who is an accused student. The accused student have the right to be represented. You could be represented by any one of your choice, but if you choose to be represented by the attorneys, please note that that is at your own expense. Since um, the university, whenever we're having these um, hearings, they are within the civil um, procedure. So the balance of probabilities is what is being used, not like in the criminal court where it's beyond the reasonable doubt. Uh, Giving you an example, it may happen that you have an incident that took place within the university. You get charged here in the university, but simultaneously also you have a case um, against you in the criminal case, in the criminal law, okay, in the criminal court. It may happen that in the criminal court, you may be found not guilty, but within the university, you might be found guilty. That doesn't mean that because here in the criminal we're not found guilty, that will influence the decision within the, the university because the university is using the balance of probabilities, which is um, in the civil matter, whereas in the criminal one, it is beyond the reasonable doubt, okay? So there are some instances where we find that the student have found themselves deal dealing with those both matters, but at the end of the day, the still the student still um, faces the consequences within, which might be harsher within the university itself. When the student is being charged, they have a right to, to plead, whether guilty or not guilty, as I indicated also earlier on, that they have a right to be represented by the representative of their choice. So if the student pleads not guilty, but found guilty, then that matter will go on the appeals tribunal. There are some instances whereby the student may be just guilty in an academic one, therefore then they'll be given a spot fine, meaning that you don't have to go to the gory details of a disciplinary hearing, but you will um, just be given a, a, a fine there and then, and um, the consequences that goes with whatever this is that you have done academically. When it's come to also when it's come to the behavioral, you just put guilty, then you just we look at the mitigating factors and then you are giving that uh, sanction, which might be a fine, um, go for um, counseling if need be, um, or, or you go for um, or, or, or whatever that, that might, might be the okay, giving a fine which may not exceed the amount of 3,000 rand, okay? But please note that if the student is found guilty in, in any of the circumstances, you may find that the, 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 
the sanction may be as harsh as expulsion. If that is if that is the case, then the student is expelled from the university for a period of four years. By that, I mean that you student must be careful how you behave within the university itself. It means that you must understand that already you're working on your future here, because if you are being expelled within the University of DUT, that doesn't mean that, I mean, you may run away to another university, but that university will subsequently go and find out what is it that made you leave our university. And we have to, 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 to let them know what actually took place within our university. So as you are already in the university, you are adults or try to act like adults. As I had indicated earlier that there is a HRN handbook, those are not the only policies or that are within the university. There are a number of policies, um, like the sexual harassment policy, there is um, social media policy. I will very much um, stress on the students to go and look at that policy because you cannot be um, going on social media posting anything that is going to be damaging to the university, of, to, the, to the integrity or to the to the image of the university and think that you're not going to be facing any consequences. With each and every action, there will be consequences. Now we have um, the appeals tribunal, which I said that it is the third level and the highest level within the university itself, appointed by the, tri by the, the vice chancellor. They look at all the matters that have been dealt with by the secondary um, level when the student was found guilty and then um, was actually had out once you appeal to the decision that was being given by the tribunal. If the, the appeals tribunal recommends that the student must be expelled, then those recommendations need to be endorsed by the vice chancellor. Um, lastly, I would, love to, I would like to leave you with the quotation from Umne Disi Lamini, looking at what is happening in the country, looking at what is happening within the institutions of higher learning. Umne Disi Lamini says, when, when you cannot control what is happening, challenge yourself to control the way you respond to what is happening. That is where your power is. Lastly, congratulations and welcome to DVT. Uh, if you have any uh, further queries that you may have or need further clarity, please contact me. I'm with the legal department, uh, S2 ground floor. Um, my email is temperlitum at dut.ac.za. Um, I'm available also on WhatsApp. Um, that's it. Congratulations. Thank you. That brings us to the end of our first segment. We shall meet again at three o'clock for a live session for questions and answers. And of course, we have great prizes to be won. So this will be the first tokens that you will receive as part of our great institution. So stay tuned and see you there. <laughs>